15. Hello and welcome to Big Deal. Now the Competition Commission of India has changed the way India does deals and the recent amendments proposed yet to be notified, remember, are set to bring about some meaningful changes in mergers and acquisitions as well as dominance, antitrust landscape of India and private equity VC investments. Let me welcome on the show two uh, learned uh, people who are going to throw more light on the amendments that are proposed and how it's going to be a game changer. Let me welcome uh, to CNBC TV 18, Gaurav Bansal, who's a partner at AZB and Partners, and Shweta Shroff Chopra, who's a partner at Shardul Amarchand Mangaldas and Company. So good to have you on the show. Now, let me begin uh, with you, Shweta. You have been deep diving on uh, the various aspects of CCI from its very inception. What are the notable changes that are really proposed in your view, which are going to have a huge impact on the deal scenario? So thanks, Nisha. Um, the Competition Act, as most people will know, has been around for a while on the statute books, and it was about it was time for an upgrade, which is why the government has um, introduced the Competition Amendment Bill uh, in Parliament. Uh, this followed a um, is followed a, a competition law review committee, which uh, undertook the exercise of reviewing the Competition Act. As far as mergers and acquisitions are control, uh, concerned, the, the fundamental changes to be expected in this is firstly the introduction of a deal value threshold. Uh, the deal value threshold is uh, going to be introduced that wherein where transactions are 2000 crores in the value of the deal, um, they would require notification to the CCI if there was substantial local nexus uh, to India, some, uh, sub substantial domestic operations in India. Yes. So given that, uh, that's going to be a fundamental game changer because until now, yes. the de minimis exemption used to be um, uh, you know, quite a safe harbor. But when this deal value thresholds will get introduced, the de minimis exemption will not uh, be available. So, so, so let me let me stop you there, Shweta, because we saw a big uh, merger uh, in the exhibition space very recently where it did not meet the threshold in terms of the turnover in the erstwhile regime before the amendments really kick in at some point. And, uh, it, it, you know, even though there were complaints, it did not come to the CCI table. Uh, so that is uh, one aspect. Let's delve into uh, deeper. That is the deal value threshold of 2,000 crore rupees. Gaurav, jump in on this. How will it make a huge difference? Because 2,000 crores for now, a robust economy like India, is very small an amount for any deal. So what do you think is the thinking on the CCI's front? And what are the factors? that needs to be looked at because the CCI chairman clearly stated in our interview that not all deals with 2,000 cross threshold will make it to the CCI uh, you know, table. So what are the factors that should be looked into? No, thanks, Nisha, first of all, for having me on the show. Uh, absolutely, you're right. I mean, uh, the deal value itself will not be the relevant parameter. It's not the only parameter for the deal to be notified to the CCI. Yes. And that was a clarification that was very helpfully uh, given by the chairperson himself on your show as well, which is that, look, uh, there will be other factors as well, uh, which will be considered to assess whether a deal is notifiable to the CCI. Because let's remember the fact that the existing thresholds of asset value and turnover actually reflect the competitive position of the target, right? Yes. Uh, and that is the fundamental basis on which the antitrust jurisdictional thresholds are based, uh, as opposed to a deal value threshold, which doesn't really, you know, signify how big the target is or how big the acquirer is. So a deal value in and of itself doesn't let you know whether a transaction is sensitive from a competitional perspective. Hmm. And therefore, you know, these guidance uh, will, which will be put together you know, uh, again, the chairperson has very cl helpfully clarified that these regulations will be put in place after extensive consultation 
with all the stakeholders. So, so, so in your view, you... Gaurav, Prima Fessi, you have been speaking to all the industry experts. You've worked on various CCI mandates uh, for uh, for many deals across the board. First few things that come to a mi your mind on the factors which should be exempt. So, first of all, you know, the factor should be related to the domestic revenue of the target, right? Uh, like Shweta said, uh, right now there's a target exemption. So if the asset value of the target is 350 crores or the turnover value is above 1000 crores, it's below 1000 crores, then you are exempt, right? Mm. Uh, what deal value will do is that even the asset value or turnover below these thresholds can get caught under the transaction value threshold. Yes. But there still needs to be uh, some sense of local nexus with the jurisdiction so that CCI can exercise jurisdiction over that deal. Yes. And that has an effect in India, right? But the right. most important parameter yes. that one needs to look at is to see that, you know, that this turnover for the target, which is set as a threshold, yes. Yes. should be highly disproportionate to the deal value itself, right? Yes. Because that is the fundamental reason for introducing a deal value threshold, yes. which is to capture killer acquisitions, right. where you are attributing a value to a target based on its potential, uh, you know, uh, competitive significance as opposed to its current competitive significance. Okay. So, so invariably, the turnover of the target in such acquisitions are going to be low. All right. So, so you brought about brought about the concept of killer acquisition. Should I jump in on this particular aspect? Because uh, do you think that uh, the CCI in widening its net on the number of deals that it comes by keeping the th deal value threshold so low is targeting big pharma, big tech, which is looking at killer acquisitions, which is a big thing overseas being talked about, antitrust commissions all across the uh, you know globe. And also in India, where some of the, the big firms may be looking at killer acquisitions and also uh, trying to really cannibalize on the smaller companies with good innovation uh, at a very nascent stage. So, so Nisha, you're absolutely right. I think the intention to introduce the deal value threshold is to capture transactions which were erstwhile not notifiable uh, because they didn't meet the asset or turnover thresholds in India. However, um, I think this net may be cast on the, on the market and therefore uh, it's important that these are defined specifically with respect to the sectors that they wish to target. Hmm. As far as killer acquisitions itself are concerned, uh, you know, this is, you are right, absolutely, that they are being looked at across the board. Mm. And typically what is sought to be uh, looked at is whether that is leading to an acquisition of technology. Because in most of these uh, digital markets or high in innovation markets, acquisition of technology and innovation or R&D, those are the factors which uh, trigger these disproportionate valuations that Gaurav was mentioning. Yeah. And... The idea is that the CCI should have jurisdiction over such transactions yes. so that they may review these transactions and determine if there is actually going to be an appreciable adverse effect. Right. But in doing, we have to bear in mind that for the startups, you know, they, the exits for both private equity as well as founders is a very important aspect. Yes. And exit to the large players, to big pharma, to big tech yes. is one of the ways where the founder's um, work product and dream is actually seen to fruition at the largest scale. Yes. So I think it's a fine balancing act. Yes. And in, in principle, whilst it's important to do so, but one has to do that in the context of where the Indian economy is and the impact it has on India. Yes. So it is uh, going to be very subjective from case to case basis. Uh, both of you will, uh, you know, agree with that. I'm uh, hoping because uh, uh, as, as Shweta said that some of the companies are designed, some of the innovations are designed to be sold to bigger companies for scalability and also for infusing more funds at a later stage. Very recently, we have seen uh, that some of, uh, uh, you know, the batteries for renewable energy storage 
uh, that kind of innovative companies have been bought over or um, have been invested into by the bigger companies because those companies themselves didn't have the ability to scale that company. So this is one point that I wanted to make. But Gaurav, uh, on this uh, particular thing, uh, this another aspect of private equity. Do we have clarity of private equity as well as venture capital? Because 2,000 crore rupees is going to be uh, assessed on the basis of of the full round of fundraising or each of this private equity or VC investing into it? Do we have clarity on that? So, Nisha, a lot of clarity will come by way of regulations, right? But there is one existing regulation which talks about interconnection, right? Which effectively says that, you know, if there are two steps of a transaction which are interconnected to each other uh, from a commercial objective perspective, uh, then effectively you need to notify all such transactions by way of one single notice to the CCI. Uh, how would that tie down into calculation of the deal value threshold, right? Uh, first of all, there's no specific guidance on that as of now, but uh, maybe one way that one can think about it is that, look, if the private equity players are uh, funding a startup, uh, having their own independent rationale, yes, uh, and without, you know, uh, consulting or without yes. pulling in money with other venture capitalists or private equity funds, yes. then such transactions should be valued independently and yes. not cumulative. Right? All right. So, so if that's the private a good equity clarity. funds are pulling in money together, yes, uh, and the objective is coming out very clearly in the deal documents, which invariably it does, yes. uh, then in those certain cases, uh, there is a possibility uh, that, you know, the deal value will be considered as on a cumulative basis. All right. So, so, so this is a very good clarity which uh, CCI has also, uh, you know, uh, given out that uh, private equity VC it's not going to be on the basis of rounds if the investors are not working together and there is no interconnectivity. But on the other hand, an acquisition made by a consortium of investors uh, pooling in together and making one decision that will come under the radar of the deal value threshold of 2000 because 2000 cross is a very small amount for the kind of rounds that we have seen even in the smaller startups. Uh, one more aspect on uh, the deal value threshold, Shweta, that we need to explain is the local next what is the understanding and what are the technicalities that needs to be explored further? So on the local nexus, I think the terms used in the draft bill is um, substantial domestic operations, substantial operations, business operations in India. Now, what is substantial business operations? I think the important thing to bear in mind that this test should needs to be as objective as possible because the the whole fundamental part uh, aspect of um, notifying a transaction needs to be transparency, certainty, and consistency. Yes. So these three aspects the CCI needs to bear in mind in determining or giving uh, examples of what local nexus or what substantial domestic operations in India would look like. Now, given that we we believe that the focus is likely to be on tech or on pharma, I think there will be. Um, there will be uh, the 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 kind of local nexus indicia will be in relation to number of users which are active, number of users which are enrolling, but it could also be um, more broader in terms of the research and development uh, facilities, for example, that the parties may have, or you know, for for um, for pharma, um, it could also be the you know, the trials which they are doing, or for example, the patents that they may have filed. So I think these are all very subjective. And I would just urge that in the commission's process of defining these, A, they continue to remain dynamic and agile to remember what is the state of play in India. B, they are as specific as possible. And C, on they, they err on the side of doing business in India, the ease of doing business in India. So mm. I think I'll at that for now. But right. we have to watch this.
So each of these will require very defined guidelines, a template approach could be very good and then with the agility on a case to case basis where, uh, you know, legal luminaries like yourself will throw more light on evolving the CCI amendments and the rules going forward as well. All right, hold on to your thoughts, uh, Gaurav, as well as Shweta. We have more to discuss on the control aspect and the material influence aspect that has been brought in by the CCI and how it's going to really be a game changer in the way India does deal. Stay, uh, stay tuned to Big Deal.